everyone, it's Amelia, and I'm here as part of RevTech Summit 2024 to discuss customer success growth with an expansion mindset. Let's get started. First, our agenda. Today, we're going to look at the SaaS and customer transformation that is occurring right now and how it's impacting not only our technology companies, but also the people who are leading them. We'll then talk about growth opportunities to protect and increase your company's revenue. And then we'll discuss additional strategies such as going beyond the champion. So first, a little bit about me. I'm the founder of Growth Molecules. We are a team of management consultants, and we work together helping companies with assessments, playbooks, fractional leadership, and customer success training. I'm also the co-author of a published case studies for MBA students and the co-author of Pressing On as a Tech Mom, which you can find on Amazon. Now let's get to our topic. First, what are some interesting stats that can influence that growth mindset? What we've noticed in software as a service is that the, the state of SaaS is changing. So companies are really focused on trying to get to break even. And if they're at break even, they want to get to profit faster and faster with the pressure of boards and, of course, this volatile economy that continues to impact technology heavily. So as a result of all of these changes that are occurring, Fast Company reported that 40% of organizations they interviewed are either thinking about cutting human resources or they've already been through at least the first round of layoffs. So that coupled with tech cuts is really influencing companies, but this isn't new. Kai Fu Lee, a, an investor and a former data scientist at both Google and Microsoft said in 2017 that robots are likely going to replace at least 50% of jobs and we're experiencing that right now. Companies are trying to get to that digital experience faster and it doesn't mean that your customer experience has to suffer. I, for example, am a G2 client and I've had a customer success manager for the past year, but I recently received an email letting me know that the services at G2 are changing. Of course, I asked what's in it for me and after reading the first email, and I'm sure I'll get several more, after, after all, change does require four to six touch points before it really starts sinking in, is that we are going to move with G2 to a pooled customer success model. So with open office hours, a knowledge base, more of a community type of experience, and I don't think that's bad. I don't want to wait for my next meeting with my customer success manager. If I have a question or I want to get more out of my engagement with G2, or maybe I'm curious about some other products they're selling, why wait until the next executive business review when I can proactively reach out and get support at the time I need it? So tech is changing. It's impacting the future of how we're interacting with software companies. And for your organization, you want to be thinking about where, where, is my, where is my company going and what is our foundation? Are we more of a reactive type of company right now, answering the first fire that comes to place? Or are we managing a book of customers and understanding what is my relationship with them? Am I partnering with them? Am I able to predict their growth? So really understanding and putting in at least a common understanding of where your customer organization is will help you plan for the future and create that growth mindset. 
when we lead these assessments and recommendations for customers, we used our we use our proprietary score methodology, looking at company strategy, the communication, are there silos? Is the operations team that is guiding and really leading the whole org doing so in a way that's scalable? And then how are your relationships with customers? Are they strong? Are they all digital? Are there friction points? And where are you losing the customers along that journey? Of course, execution is critical. You can have the best playbooks, the best technology, but if you're not executing it on it and measuring it regularly, then your action plan may not be helpful in this year and beyond. So once you have a level set of where's my organization, where are the gaps, how do we plan for the next three to 12 months is incredibly important. And of course, you want to really focus in customer success at the growth opportunities. Sales is busy landing new logos. It's our job in customer success to focus on growth and of course, protecting revenue. So what I like to call the brown box economy is the one where the first time you you sell to a client, you may be selling at a certain price point, but that first year of revenue or that first product they buy is not enough. It may not even be enough to break even. What is most impactful and what really matters to your board, to your company growth, is this piece on the right, the adopt and the expand. And how do you get those customers coming back year after year? And if you're in a business to customer model, that is possible as well. And you may notice that with your dentist or your nail salon, uh, all of these different kinds of services are setting up even your medical doctor, we see that with medical doctors where you buy a subscription for yearly access to faster uh, doctor interactions, for example. So SaaS and reoccurring business is not only a tech phenomenon, but what was started with Amazon with that little brown box landing at your doorstep and those endorphins that you feel when you open that box is possible as well with other industries and other products that you're selling. And what really matters is, is not only the sale and the commitment to your partnership, but what happens beyond. Your customers are thrilled. They're happy to celebrate the wins of how they've been working with your product, what they've achieved. But when it comes to renewals, they're going to be asking, what's in it for me? What am I going to achieve next for the price I'm paying? And so as you're going into renewal and growth conversations, be prepared with not only celebrating the wins, but showing them what's possible in the future. So you have four growth opportunities I want to share today when you're thinking about growing your customers. First, you have the buyer that you are targeting and is responsible for really making the decision on behalf of his or her team for renewing. And they are looking at the competitive landscape well before the renewal comes into place. Is there anything better? Has any tech come out that may be more affordable, maybe faster to access? Maybe it's on my cell phone and I've been really wanting that feature. So really making sure you understand what's important to the, to the person renewing and then, of course, the competitive landscape. You also want to make sure your CSMs are ready for upsell conversations, right? The, the new product that you've released, more licenses that you want to uh, bring to the attention of the buyer. Maybe they, they acquired another company or maybe you now offer view-only licenses that your sales team can benefit from. All of those type of conversations are important for you to equip your team with. 
And then of course, if you lose your champion, that buyer who made the decision or who really became the champion of your product, they're suddenly gone with a layoff or they landed a new role. You want to ensure your CSMs are able to resell to maybe the CEO. Maybe they're not replacing this person for a while. Or if someone does come into that role, quickly creating a relationship that will allow them not only to show that new buyer what has been achieved to date, but what is possible and why your product is better than the others. Another interesting one is for new buyers, that's someone in another department, maybe a referral uh, that that your, your previous buyer is making to a new buyer. You want to make sure that you're creating multi-threading relationships with these new potential buyers. And even if your customer success team isn't responsible for that conversation, being able to identify them is an absolute must for customer success professionals because after all, especially in enterprise tech, you want to, to really create these relationships of trust. So that really starts with expansion opportunities at the beginning, when you're in that honeymoon stage, they're committed to your product and they're looking to get value quickly. That's when you want to make sure you're truly having a good handoff from sales to CS. And then you're making sure that, that they're getting value quickly so that it sets you up from day one for a strong retention when you start those conversations in six to nine months they've started already on day one, and it sets you up as a strategic partner, right? If you have a new product that's coming out, they're more likely to have a conversation or willing to hear you out about how that new product may benefit their company if they had a really strong onboarding. If they didn't, they may not be answering your calls, and they're definitely hesitant about renewing when it's time for that conversation. Today, according to TSIA, expansion is very much the part of a customer success manager role. So 2015, almost 10 years ago, only 10% of CSMs were responsible for any sort of expansion conversation. Fast forward to today, it's a very different conversation. CSMs are responsible for identifying new customer qualified leads. They're, I, they're responsible for getting referenceable customers, for getting customers to speak on stages at industry-wide events. The role has heavily changed. And that's why it's in time, in, it's time for customer success professionals to embrace a different role. And that role doesn't always have to be high touch, right? Right now with digital and all this artificial intelligence infusing all sorts of industries, it's really important to really reassess your customer journey and really understand what are the touch points that matter that will lead to growth and then which ones are still not ironed out and a high risk opportunity for your company to address? Yes, it's a risk. Yes, it's bad. Yes, it may lead to churn. But I see it as an opportunity to break the silos across your team, bring them together to do this exercise of identifying the moments that lead to, for example, the discovery of your product to a conversation all the way through renewals. And this type of exercise, addressing all of these different points that you're looking at, does require a team of different leaders from different departments coming together, breaking down silos, putting up a bunch of sticky notes on a, on a big whiteboard, as you can see in the photo here, uh, with my colleagues, James and Sabina, and a team and what the outcome was. So what started as conversations, maybe differences in what the customer journey can look like to coming to an agreement of where are the risks, 
where are the opportunities and where are the moments that are truly leading to revenue growth. What comes out of that is more cohesive conversations and touch points for the customers, beginning with sales all the way through to support, right? And through expansion, loyalty, renewals, who's involved in those conversations, why, and how are you all going to help each other really achieve success? And that is is growth. So speaking of growth, let's talk about the different durable growth opportunities. Champions are not enough in your organizations today. I just shared that companies interviewed by Fast Company admittedly said we're either cutting human resources or thinking about doing it to at least get to break even or show some sort of profit. And so if your champions are leaving, those people who are creating viral growth, one, make sure they're in your CRM or customer success platform, CSP, because if you only have one, your, your risk of losing that customer is so much higher. You need to have more than one. And that's where multi threading comes into place when thinking about a growth mindset. Being able to equip your CS team with skills of listening, asking more conversation and more questions that lead to introductions to more people in the organization is what multi-threading is all about. Having multiple touch points across a company that will not only give them a better performance and sense of purpose. They understand what they're doing. They're building more relationships with a client. It's a positive experience. They're able to stay ahead when it comes to a competitive situation. If you have more champions behind you, a a competitor coming in becomes a lot harder. Only 9% of companies multi-thread so if you can teach your team how to do it, we have an ebook on our website teaching you exactly how to do that. If you want to check it out later on, you will be ahead of your customers. So multi-threading works for CSM managers. It gives you time to have conversations with your team to focus on relationship building, improving performance, breaking silos, not only across teams, but within your team, helping each other, role playing, uh, all very important skills so that you feel more confident with multi-threading and it helps you protect your revenue from the get-go. So David Scott, he's a VC based in Boston. He says the two reasons for churn are poor onboarding and losing a champion. And what we've talked about today is starting renewal conversations from the beginning of the customer journey, really understanding the customer journey and who in your organization can help improve it, where are the handoffs, how do you make them more seamless, and then of course, how do you create more champions throughout the engagement? So at the end of onboarding, asking your executives on the call, who else in your organization can benefit from our product that you can introduce me to, right? If you have the skill and the confidence to be able to ask those questions, you're going to be able to not only more successfully onboard your customers, but but also be prepared should you lose your champion. So multi-threading should be measurable. Uh, You have three to six stakeholders who make a decision about buying and renewing your product. Make sure you know who they are, require them in your CRM, and then eight eight points of contacts are involved in a one opportunity. The CEO, the CFO, the COO, they all may, may be involved and you may never know who they are unless you ask who else was involved in this conversation. And as a CSM leading up to the renewal, It's a chance to find out, has anything changed? Are the same stakeholders still involved leading up to that renewal? And just understanding that your clients 
have different ways of communicating. So understanding what is the best way to communicate with them is important and setting that up early, especially in an enterprise engagement is critical. So when you're thinking about your customers and where to start, you want to look at this quadrant, segment your customers and really start with the high revenue impact and engagement customers Make sure you have lots of champions within that customer account. Make sure that as you're expanding in that account, your onboarding is strong, continues to remain as such, and that you're leveraging those voices. Next, you'll go to the low engagement, but high revenue, right? Those are very important. If they are low engagement, they're a risk. You want to make sure that you address them. And then moving down the the quadrant, the lower revenue, but high engagement, you can still leverage those voices for a G2 review, a case study. And then the fourth, you'll want to think about how can we up their engagement with a more digital approach? Because especially as newer generations come into the workforce, They want more of a digital touch. They don't necessarily want to be on the phone going through long, long onboarding experiences. So with that, I've shared a lot of information in 20 minutes. I hope that you were able to take at least one key action that you can put in place, that you can share with your colleagues, and that you can test. Remember, customer expansions now are are relevant and becoming more relevant in a reoccurring revenue model. That one-time purchase just isn't enough to make a sustainable and, and, and a viable company stick around for a long time, especially in a competitive market. And I know we're out of time, but if you would like to continue the conversation, I offer complimentary strategy sessions. Feel free to book some time with me. And of course, I always love connecting with new people uh, on LinkedIn. So thanks everyone for your time.